Hi everybody, my name is Melanie Newman and this is Honey the Cavoodle and welcome to our grooming channel. In today's grooming session, I'm going to share with you how I clip honey. So I'm going to be using snap-on combs on her body. Her mum has asked for her neck area and coming towards her chest and her underline to be a little bit shorter than her body. And I'm going to be using snap-ons on her legs, but mostly scissoring them as well. So I'm going to be using straight scissors, curves, thinners, as well as blenders. So lots of different techniques throughout this whole trim. So let's get started. I have already bathed and dried honey. So I've bathed her in our Relax collection. So I've shampooed her twice and conditioned her once. And I've gone through with the Relax Co Conditioning Spray with our slicker and making sure that we've got no knots and tangles. So going through with my universal slicker and then I'm going through with my fine tooth comb because when we're using snap-on combs, we can't have any knots in her coat because a snap-on comb will actually snag in the coat and make a little dint in her hair as we're clipping. So her coat needs to be completely knot free. So I'm going to quickly clip out her pads and her sanitary areas. So if you guys would like to know how to clip out pads, we have a video for clipping out pads and we also have a video for clipping out sanitary areas on male and female dogs. So I'll quickly get started on that. I'm going to be using my Artero Premium 2 Speed Clipper and I'm using a Osta 22mm snap-on comb and I've got a 30 blade underneath that snap-on comb. So this snap-on comb I'm going to be using on her body and then I'm going to use a larger snap-on comb, so a longer length on her legs and then scissoring in her little legs. I'm going to begin with her neck area and then moving to her rib cage and then down towards the back of her. So starting at one point and then working towards another point. Moving that ear out of the way because if we don't move the ear out of the way, um, we can easily clip hair on that ear. So moving that ear out of the way and putting my clipper on the two speed starting at the back of her skull and working down the side of her neck behind her ear and towards her shoulder blade I'm always clipping with the direction of her coat lay 
So the coat is falling down towards her shoulder and then towards her legs. So this is the direction that we're clipping. And working over her top line. So along her back and then around her rib cage. And as I go around her rib cage, I'm still following the direction of the coat growth. So I'm not coming straight across just yet. I'm just following that direction of how the coat lays. So as you're clipping your dog, it's important to always look at how the coat is sitting and what direction it's sitting in. So coming around towards her underline. And we want to go over the same area a few times just so we get a nice even and smooth cut and this will help minimise the amount of um, clipper tracks, so tracks caused by the snap-on and just getting a nice even smooth finish. And then moving towards her rear end. So again, just following the direction of the coat growth. And as I'm clipping down her back leg, I'm going to come in and just skim off her leg. So once I hit that knee, that's when I start to skim off. So skim. So coming off her thigh, heading towards her knee, and then just skimming straight off. And this will help give nice parallel lines from the rear profile. I'm lifting up her tail and then coming at the back of her back leg. And I like to skim out all this hair to her hock area because it just keeps everything nice and neat and tidy and nice and short in this area. And she does go on lots of walks, so I like to minimise the amount of prickles and um, grass seeds that can get caught in her coat. And then pop her tail in between her back legs and then come off at the base of the tail. If you wanted the back of her back leg shorter, we can actually go in reverse and it will cut a little bit more hair off and get this area nice and short. And then go with to make sure everything's nice and even. And off her top line into her croup and coming towards her knee and then just skimming straight off. So coming in and then straight off. In, straight off. And what we do to one side, we need to do to the other. So I'm going to come in reverse at the back of that back leg and just get this nice and tight through this area. Good girl, honey. And then we can see our back legs 
we get that nice parallel line coming through her back legs and we don't get these big um, bits of hair hanging off the outer back leg on that side profile so it's nice and tight coming through here and it's not going to change the appearance of her legs so her legs are definitely going to be longer and look more full than her body i'm going to pick up the leg that i'm not clipping and then run our snap on down the inner side of the other back leg So picking up the back leg that we're not clipping and then running our snap on on the inside of the back leg and this will get it nice and short and nice and neat and tidy and it will help minimize our scissor work And then we're going to clip her other side. So moving that ear out of the way and starting behind the ear and behind the top of the skull, so our ossipod, and then working down towards her shoulder and then into her rib cage. And you can see as I go over the shoulder area, I come into the shoulder but then I'm skimming off so I'm not actually clipping into this leg so as I hit her elbow that's when I just start to skim off so um, I can feel my blade is near that elbow so then I skim off and let's go over this rib cage into that flank area so if you've watched our video on clipping and danger points I like to pop my hand behind the flank area just to ensure that it's nice and flat as I'm clipping because this is a major danger point And then I'm just going to keep going over my clipper work until no more hair comes off. So making sure my clipper work is nice and even and there's no track lines or no clipper lines. Remembering earlier I mentioned that Honey's owner wanted her neck and her chest and her underline nice and short so what i'm going to do is take my snap on and come in reverse up to her jawline so taking it nice and easy as i'm coming into her jawline And then once I've gone against, I'm then going to go with the direction of the coat row and then skimming into those legs. Move this ear out of the way and just get behind that ear. And because we're using the same snap-on to go in reverse in this neck area, we're not going to have a transitional line. It's just going to blend in really nice and you're not even going to notice that we've used two different um, techniques as we're clipping. And when I'm bringing my clippers down towards the front of those legs, I'm coming in and then I'm spinning outwards. So in and outwards. As I clip her underline, I'm going to gently pop her up on her hind legs and then come in reverse over her underline and 
and then taking it through her rib cage. Again, I like to still go with the direction of the coat growth. So going with, and this will then blend in that transitional line from where we've clipped her underline into this rib cage. As I'm coming into this flank area with my hand behind the flank, I don't want to take my 22mm snap-on into our knee area because I want more hair left at the front of the back leg than I do at the back. So as I come into our knee area, I'm just gently going to skim off this area. So I'm going quite firm in with my clippers in the flank area. But as I come around to that knee area, I'm just skimming off the knee. So I'm keeping all this hair here. If you do have a dog that's a little bit nervous about you holding their front legs, gently move the front leg forward and then you can take your clippers through that underline and you can even go in reverse as well if you wanted it a little bit shorter. And then back through and then do the sides of our rib cage, making sure we've got that nice and blended. And that's another way you can do their underline as well. But you need to be careful because their armpits are a danger point as well. So this underarm area is a danger point. Once I've completed her body with the 22 millimeter, I'm now going to use a 38 millimeter. So this is an inch and a half, and I'm going to run this over her legs. So I like to start at our shortest part. So even though we've put this nice and short, I'm then going to just follow that through to her legs. And it's not taking off much, but it's taking off enough. So it's probably taking off about half an inch. And as I'm clipping her, I like to pop my hand around her knee so I'm supporting her joints as I'm clipping. So it's nice and comfortable. I'm not lifting her leg over the back of her or anything like that. She's nice and comfortable as I'm clipping her. and through her hock. This is where I would run the 38 millimeter over her knee area. So remember before I was saying not to run the 22 millimeter over it um, because we need more hair left on her knee. This is where we would run the 38 millimeter. So once I've completed my back leg, then we are going to move towards our front leg. And when I'm clipping our front legs, I like to just gently move their leg out forward, so not in an unnatural position. So I want the dog to feel nice and comfortable, and I want Honey to make sure she feels nice and safe when I'm clipping this front leg. So I'm holding onto her paw and I'm still going with the direction of her coat growth. And then I'm going to support her front leg by popping her elbow in the palm of my hand and gently holding onto her leg and then running my snap-on down the front of her leg and see how comfortable she feels and she's not a fan of getting her legs clipped but i want honey to feel nice and safe and secure while i'm doing something that she she doesn't really enjoy and to go honey and then still supporting her leg by holding onto her elbow and then coming down the side of her leg. 
And when you're holding onto their elbow, you can kind of maneuver their leg around and they still feel really safe and secure. And then the back of her front leg. So I'm still supporting this elbow area and then just coming straight down the back of her front leg. And then I'm just going to cross check all that clipper work by running my clippers through her leg again. Good girl. Good girl. And now her other leg. So supporting her by popping her elbow in the palm of my hand. And then running my clipper straight down the front of her front leg. Good girl, honey. And she's getting a bit wiggly. So pop her in another comfortable position. And then keep going over that side of that leg she's getting a little bit wiggly so I'm just going to pop her up so making sure she's standing and do the back of her front leg so instead of forcing her to behave, I like to just readjust her into a position that she's comfortable in. So I feel like the more you groom a dog, the more you begin to understand how they're more comfortable and what they prefer to do while you're grooming them. So then I like to just work around dogs, funny little positions that they like to put themselves in. Good girl. Sometimes if you have a dog that is moving their leg a lot, you can pick up the leg that you're not clipping and then clip the, the leg that you want to clip. Good girl. Come on, Belle. And then her last leg, her back leg. And then coming straight down and I'm still supporting her leg with her knee in the palm of my hand. But with the palm of my hand, I've got control of her tail. So if I just clip with the tail natural and how she prefers to hold it, I will definitely be clipping off hair. So I'm popping it in the palm of my hand and then holding onto her knee. So I've got hold of that tail and the hair on her tail the entire time I'm clipping her back leg. I have completed her entire body with the clippers. So what I'm going to do now is scissor her feet and then um, scissor off any little bits that the clippers have missed on her little legs. So using my slicker, to brush out all the little hairs on her pad. So even though we've clipped her pad with the clippers, I still prefer to run my scissors over them just to neaten them up and make sure that I've got all the little hairs. So her pad is nice and clean and the base is nice and clean. So when I pop her foot back on the ground, I'm then going to use my fine tooth comb to comb all the hair downwards. And then using my curves and popping my scissors on a 45 degree angle, I'm then going to scissor around her foot. So the appearance of her foot is nice and round. And I'm just using the tips of my scissors, so I'm not using the entire scissor, I'm just using the tips. 
So I'm going to be doing this with all four feet before I scissor her legs. So once I've scissored all our feet nice and round, I'm now going to tidy up her legs. So I'm going to begin with her front legs and then move towards her back legs. So I prefer to comb everything to one side and then using my straights, I'm going to just scissor off anything that the clippers may have missed. So once I comb it, if you find the hair isn't staying in place for when you scissor, use a little bit of coat conditioning spray and then comb it over and then it'll stay in one place. And as I just scissor off the tips that the clippers have missed, and I'm scissoring towards the prosternum, so towards the middle of honey. And I'm just tipping little bits of hair off. I start my leg from where we've scissored her foot. So you'll be able to see when you pick up the dog's foot, the roundness coming from the base of the foot into that leg. And then scissoring up towards the prosternum of my dog, so the middle of my dog. If I start to scissor in towards her armpit, it's really going to keyhole this area out. And when I look at Honey from the front profile, I want nice, straight, parallel legs. A little bit later, we will use our blenders and just scissor out her underarms because she does wear a harness. But for now, we're just going to concentrate on making these legs nice and straight and neat and even. If you're not confident with your straights, you can use your blenders as well. And it's the same sort of technique. So just scissoring a nice straight line towards the middle of our dog. Once we've done the inside of our leg, I'm then going to use my fine tooth comb and comb everything upwards and scissor off all the hair that's hanging out of this comb. So we, again, we want a nice straight parallel leg. So comb everything up and we can see all the little hairs that are past the comb and we're going to scissor all those off. So I like to use a little bit of spray so the coat won't move as I'm scissoring. And then coming off her shoulder, and I'm using my blenders for this, and then coming down the side of that leg. And it's not taking much off at all. So you can see it's just little bits of hair. Just the tips. So we're just neatening up this area.
Now, because she has a little bit more of a drop coat, that means that her coat falls towards the ground. I prefer to use my blenders with the direction of the coat growth, so downwards. And blending in her shoulder area from where we've clipped shorter to longer into that leg. So we've used a 22 mil on her shoulder area and then we've used the 38 mil on her legs. So we're just blending in all that longer hair into the shorter hair and always combing upwards. And then around to the front of the leg. Again, combing up. And then just tipping off any hair that's hanging out of where we've clipped and scissored. So any long bits that just look out of place, this is the bits that we'll scissor off. And this will give us a nice even finish. up our leg and combing everything to the other side and just making sure we've got all those little hairs which it looks nice and even and neat now and then the back of the front leg and the goal is to have the same width throughout these legs. So we don't want a tighter foot, like a smaller foot than a bigger elbow. We want it nice and even and the same width throughout. So front profile, same width and side profile, the same width and the rear profile, the same width. So keep combing up. And scissoring down and I'm using my blenders so this will give a nice soft finish and remembering to cross check so combing all our little hairs up and scissoring off anything that's sticking outwards any little strays hanging out And we're always watching that shape. So as I'm combing up, again, watching the width. And if it's a little bit bigger up this area, then I can just scissor a little bit more off um, and vice versa. So if there's too much hair at the bottom, I can take a little bit more off there as well. So always watching that balance as we're um, going over these legs. So I'm just going to cross check the back of her front leg by moving her front leg forward and then using my comb to pull out all those hairs and anything that's sticking out I'm just going to scissor off and remembering this is the back of the front leg not the side it's the back so we need to get underneath our dog to be able to see what we're scissoring. And then her other front leg. So I like to comb everything over to one side. And using my spray to keep it in place. Using my straights, coming towards the prosternum. So towards the middle of my dog and then keep combing mm -hmm. 
And if you're not confident using straights, you can use your blenders. It's totally up to you. Once we've scissored the inside of the front leg, we're now going to do the opposite side. So the outside of the front leg. And combing everything up. Using my spray to keep it in place. And using my blenders, I'm coming off that shoulder and I'm coming straight down. So anything hanging out of this area, so out of the comb. So if we comb all this up, anything that's hanging out our straight line, we are going to scissor off. And I'm just going to blend in our shoulder into the front of our front leg because we did clip this area a little bit shorter. And comb it all up. And the key is to combing up your work, to cross check your work. And this is how you'll get a nice even finish. We can cross check up in that chest area as well, making sure everything's nice and even and we don't have any little bits of long hair sticking out. And then the back of the front leg, so combing all those little hairs upwards and then coming down, going with the direction of the coat growth. And cross checking to make sure the back of our front leg is nice and straight. And then it's nice and straight. Good girl. So once we've done our front legs, we can now work on her back legs. So again, Comb everything up and pull it out. So don't be scared to pull out your work. And this is how you'll get a nice and straight, even finish, beautiful scissor work, beautiful blending work is by combing everything out constantly. So we can see once we've combed everything out, we can see what we need to take off. So anything that's past that comb on this side, we need to scissor off and the same as the inside as well. So coming down that leg and towards that hock and constantly combing and scissoring, combing and scissoring. And then we get start to get a nice parallel leg. And combing up our hock. There's a few little hairs through this area that the clippers couldn't get. So just going to comb them up and then just scissor those off. And remembering with our clippers, we went in reverse at the back of her back legs. So if I comb everything up, I can see that this area is a lot longer than this area. So what that says to me is, is that I need to blend in this transitional line. And so it's nice and even and we won't, by looking at it, we're not going to see a long bit or a short bit. We're going to see a nice, even, smooth finish into our leg, from the back of our leg, into the side of our leg and then down towards our hock. And 
side of the back leg so I can see it's a lot heavier through the inside near her hock so I'm gently going to scissor out a lot more hair in this area and then coming straight up into the inside of her thigh and we can see how it's nice and even and straight compared to her other side so if I comb all this up we can see all the hair that needs to come off compared to this side okay so let's look at the other side so comb everything on the inside of that back leg and the outside of the back leg and then scissoring a nice and blending a nice parallel line straight into that foot and into that hock area if you don't have blenders you can definitely use straights for this you would just have to keep your hand a little bit more steady and just take your time as you're scissoring so and as you can see I'm moving to the side profile and then I'm moving to the back profile so where we're blending our longer bits into our shorter bits In the inside of that back leg and our hock area so combing that all up and cross check so comb it up again and scissor anything that's hanging off or those little bits that are just hanging out of the of the leg that should be cut off and remembering our lines so our nice parallel lines from the rear profile While I'm at this back profile, I'm going to comb everything up and I want to blend in around her little bum area so it's nice and blended and quite short so it blends in with the shorter area that we've clipped and it will keep it nice and neat so she won't have any accidents on herself. So I'm using my blenders for this. I'm going to neaten up the front of the back leg and into the tuck up area. So what I'm going to do is with my blenders come around that tuck up area and then begin to scissor down the front of the back leg and I'm not going to take off much I'm just making it nice and even so we don't have lots of hair sticking out and we want a nice plush even leg so remember we're going to have more hair at the front of the back leg than we are at the back and constantly combing so if you do see some little hairs that the clippers have missed or um, you've 
they're a little bit uneven this is our chance to really scissor that leg so it's nice and smooth and nice and even and the same width throughout that leg And while we've got Honey in this position, I'm going to neaten up her underline. So moving that front leg forward and using my blenders to just neaten up our underline area. Good girl, Honey. Good girl. So it's nice and neat and we don't have any long bits hanging hanging down. Good girl, good girl. And what I'm going to do is gently move her leg to the side and because she does wear a harness I want to scissor out her underarms but she really doesn't like it. So I'm just going to take my time with that. Good girl. And just do one scissor at a time. Good girl. And her other one. So I'm coming into this underarm area and just scissoring that nice and short with um, my blenders. And then her other side. Okay, so her legs and her body is all complete. Um, so now I just need to concentrate on her pretty little face. So let's begin her face. So I've combed out all the little knots and tangles and I'm going to be using my fine tooth comb again with pulling out any little bits of hair and um, using my thinners, my blenders, my curves, as well as my straights. Come up into the inner corner of her eyes to remove all the hair in this area. And I prefer to use my thinners because I like a softer appearance and a nice soft expression because she does have these big beautiful eyes and I like to create a nice soft expression around these eyes and if I do use clippers sometimes it can be a little bit too harsh so in between her eyes I'm going with the direction of the coat growth and the other side so it's nice and neat and tidy all the hair in front of the inner corner of her eyes. It's nice and neat. Um, it's nice and even. So we can see how Honey has her little eyelashes left on. So how I leave them on is, as I'm trimming her fringe with my thumb, I hang on to these little lashes. So I'm going to comb her fringe forward and I've got hold of these little lashes so I can't scissor them and then I'm going to scissor towards that outer corner of her eyes and once I've scissored using the straights 
then I'm going to go through with my thinners again so we get a nice soft appearance so it's not a harsh hard line good girl honey so then we can see her eyelash and I think it makes it really pop you're beautiful darling yes so hold that little eyelash again comb those little hairs forward and I'm scissoring down with the direction of the coat growth there we go so that's one eye done scissoring towards the outer corner of the eye with my straights and then I'm going to use my thinners to blend that line in so it's a nice soft line over her eye area good girl and then comb it again and just scissor around her eyes and then combing down the middle of in between her eyes so the middle of her fringe and then I'm just going to use my thinners to gently blend in her fringe so it's nice and blended and it's a nice soft appearance And if we want to cross check again comb and we can see little bits that we've missed and combing forward is the key with fringes so I think that really frames her eyes and really makes those beautiful eyes pop moving that ear backwards and I'm holding it with my index finger and then I've popped my thumb around her muzzle so it keeps her nice and steady and using my blenders I'm going to come up into that ear so near the start of the ear canal so this just keeps the hair in front of the ear canal you know nice and neat and tidy and combing that hair up and then using my thinners and going with the direction of the coat growth we don't need to take off a lot we just want to neaten everything up and blending everything in to her jawline and remember earlier that we've clipped this nice and short so we want to blend in this transitional line from our jawline into our neck area coming from the front of her muzzle using our thinners and coming up into our cheek and our um, jaw area So keeping that ear out of the way and coming up in front of her ear canal and keeping this area nice and neat and tidy and I like to take it quite short in front of the ear canal hanging on to her lash and then coming down into our neckline and working towards her muzzle so I'm going to swap to my thinners so we get a nice soft blend and we've done both sides of the muzzle so now we're going to do our lower jaw
these thinners are grabbing at the tips a little bit so I'm going to have to send them off for sharpening. I'm just going to round in her muzzle a little bit more into that jawline. So going with the direction of the coat growth. And I've kind of got my thinners on the angle that I would like the muzzle to come around underneath that jaw. And then as I'm cutting, I'm moving my thinners around to underneath her jaw and then working down towards her neck. So it's a continuous line as I'm scissoring and blending. I'm just going to comb out the front of her muzzle because I want it nice and neat and tidy right at the front. So constantly combing. So we've got this nice line that's coming from either side of her muzzle and it's nice and even and nice and straight. So as her muzzle starts to grow out, it doesn't grow out uneven, it'll grow out nice and even and it, it won't look out of place as it begins to grow. So let's talk about the top of her head. So where her ears meet her skull, I like to just come in a little bit shorter. So it really sets her ears in. So we're looking at a nice round skull and then coming straight out into her ears. So using my thinners again and going with the direction of the coat growth. And then we can take some length off the top of her skull as well. With her coat being a little bit of a drop coat, so it's not tight curls, um, it tends to sp split in the middle. So even if I groom it with it being split, um, I'm still going to get a nice even finish. Even if I comb it up, we want both sides to be nice and even. So we can split it in the middle if we like and scissor it how it falls. And it's important when we're scissoring the top of our skull that we're looking at the entire head. We're not just looking at this part here. We're also looking at the muzzle and making sure everything's nice and balanced. I prefer to scissor my heads in because I feel like I can get the shape that brings out the best in that particular dog. So if I had to clip the top of this skull it might take a little bit too much hair off and I just want that nice soft expression with honey um, and a nice round top skull so I feel like the top of her skull is quite flat so if I had have taken the clippers along it may have taken too much hair off. I want to just take a little bit more off at the front of her muzzle so I'm going to comb this forward comb her little whiskers forward and then just come straight down with my thinners and then see how it just starts to round that in a little bit more. I'm going to move her ears forward and just comb out all these little hairs and then using my thinners I'm going to come in behind that ear and just tidy up all that hair. 
And our final step is Miss Honey Bunny's ears. So combing them all down. And using my thinners, I'm going to come straight across the bottom of the ear. And keeping that nice and straight. And the reason I'm using my thinners is because I want to create a nice soft line. And we're going to then come up on not quite a 45 degree angle and just soften into that line that we've created straight across. So it kind of comes in and rounds off at the bottom. And the same as the front of the ear. So just rounding it into itself and it just gives a nice soft appearance. And it's really, I find it really lovely for a little girl, like a nice rounded soft ear. So we've taken length off the ear, but it's the thinners have given it a really soft appearance. So it's not a harsh line coming straight across. And making sure our ears are nice and even from the front profile. So I don't normally trim honey's tail, but if you did want to scissor a tail, you could bring it all down towards the end and just scissor off the tips, or we can comb it all down and then scissor off this way. But um, her mum prefers her tail not to be trimmed, so we leave it all natural. I'm going to finish her off by using the relaxed cologne on her. Thank you for watching. And if you guys have any questions, pop them in the comments below um, and I will definitely get back to you. I'm also going to pop links of all the equipment I've used in today's grooming session in the description below. So be sure to check all the equipment out. And until next time, happy grooming guys.